What's going on everyone? Vince the Longineer here. Super excited because we are seeding the lawn. It's one of the last things we need to do to finish this lawn renovation. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know on how to do it, so stay tuned. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and also consider subscribing. We teach everything you need to know about lawn care and maintaining your yard. And second, if you are just tuning in here, we are in the middle of a lawn renovation. I actually created a playlist. If you need to catch up, it's called the 2022 Lawn Renovation. I'll leave that linked in the eye above. You can go ahead and check that out. It goes over everything we have done to this point. Once things are completely established here, I will do a summary video of the entire process, but I'm trying to film this as real time as possible to go through the steps because I know some of you are in the middle of your lawn renovations right now and are following along with these videos. So just stay tuned and that recap video will be uploaded as soon as we have established turf here. As you can see behind me, this is everything we're gonna need to complete the seating today. Let me go over every single step, starting with spreading seed. So we're gonna be using the classic drop spreader here to do a perimeter pass, making sure that we're only dropping seed between the wheels there and not broadcasting things out, not getting things into the beds or anything like that. This will just drop it nicely right down at the property line and along the beds. Then we'll come back with a broadcast spreader and basically fill everything in in the middle. And then I like to lightly rake everything in. So this is a nice little tine rake that will just lightly rake things in. We're not going too deep with that, followed by rolling. I think it's very important for seed to soil contact to lightly press the seed into the soil. Lightly rolling the seed in is going to help protect your seed from the birds. It's also going to help protect it from some of the light erosion you might get from a rain event. However, it will not protect you from that gully wash or storm event that's just gonna wash everything out, but this will definitely help. Next up, we are going to spray Tenacity. Tenacity is going to help with that pre-emergent control, but it will also allow the grass seed to germinate. So we've got everything we need here, our backpack sprayer, some PPE, the Tenacity, something to mix everything with. I also plan on spraying some of this seaweed slash humic and fulvic acid. This is soil hume from from Simple Lawn Solutions. I mentioned that this is an optional step in the Cool Season Lawn Care Renovation Guide. Um, definitely do not need to do this. However, I've seen good results with using this and using it on a regular basis, uh, adding it to the soil about every, every 45 days or so. So we're gonna start with this today and then we'll continue to do that in the coming months in the future. Then we are gonna be putting down the starter fertilizer. Now, I've mentioned this in the very first video of this playlist that this contains tenacity. This contains the same product that is in this bottle right here. So we are double dipping a little bit. I went over that last time. Follow the label instructions. There are limitations on how much tenacity you can put down, especially depending on the seed type that you are using. And then the last thing we do is spread the peat moss. So here I have about 2,500 square feet or so. We've got four bags of peat moss. We've got the Lansy compost and peat moss spreader right here. This is gonna make short work of it, easy work of it. Um, really quick, last thing that we need to do to cover everything. And then as a passive aggressive reminder to the neighborhood, I will be staking and placing this caution tape here around the perimeter of everything. You totally do not need to do that. However, we do have a lot of neighborhood children in the area and it's just a nice polite way to say, get off my lawn. So we're gonna get started here today with the seating. Let's get right into it. So one thing you wanna be aware of is the type of seed that you have and the seeding rate that you need to apply to your area. So we have perennial ryegrass here. Uh, the, the recommended seeding rate for bare ground, which is what we have, is seven pounds per thousand square feet. Um, I would recommend that you reach out to the seed provider you get your seed from 
for the recommended seeding rates. If you're doing an overseed or a new seeding on bare ground, there are different rates and different rates based on the type of seed that you get. So make sure you are following those seeding rate recommendations. A lot of people ask me, what should my spreader setting be for spreading either a fertilizer or weed and feed or even grass seed? I always tell them, weigh out your product and start on a low setting on your spreader. Start on that low setting and spread it out as evenly as you can and you'll likely have some extra, right, after you're done spreading. Then keep spreading in a different direction. Say start out going north and south. You'll likely have some extra. Then turn around, go east and west in the opposite direction, right? The crisscross direction until you're completely empty. Keep going north and south, then east and west again until you're completely empty and you have a really nice even coverage that will help you calibrate your spreader to your own walking speed um, and i really you know when people ask me what spreader setting to use that's what i tell them every single time so in the drop spreader here i'm going to be using this for my perimeter pass i measured the bottom here we have 22 inches across the bottom of the bar that's going to be spreading uh, the perimeter of the entire area that i'm going to be walking is about 350 feet so i can get an area from that and we're about 540 or so square feet for that area if i'm using seven pounds per thousand square feet i'm just about four pounds of seed that i need to put in the hopper here then i'm going to walk around the entire perimeter with the drop spreader and keep going on that low setting until we completely empty everything out then i will switch over to the broadcast spreader here this is the echo rb 100 s we will put the remainder of the seed in here and same thing start on the low setting go north and south east and west until it is completely empty i do recommend that you have your irrigation system or diy sprinkler set up ready to go and in place before you throw down all the seed because you don't want to be walking or tracking all over this newly seeded area after you put everything down. I'll leave a link to a video I did not too long ago actually at the beginning of this season on a DIY irrigation setup that I have for my lawn. It seems to work okay for me. Maybe in the future I'll do an irrigation system. We'll see, but I do recommend you get that stuff set up before seeding all right so the seed is down let me show you what it looks like up close this is generally how it looks uh there are some areas that are a little bit heavier like over here it looks pretty heavy so the next step is going to be raking and part of what that raking will do too is uh you know break up these heavier seeded areas and more evenly spread things out but more importantly that raking is going to help really increase that seed to soil contact, get a little bit of uh, soil coverage over top of the seed. Then we will roll it in and lightly press everything into the soil to really help hold this together through the entire germination process and through to establishment. All right, so we just finished seeding and raking it in and rolling it in. Let me show you what it looks like. This is exactly what you want. It's not completely covered by dirt. It's just lightly pressed in, and that is exactly what you want. That's going to help give you that great seed to soil contact. It's gonna help prevent from washout in a light to medium rain event. Like I was saying earlier, if you have a very, very strong storm come through with a lot of rain, high intensity, you know, there's not much that can protect you against that. Maybe except perhaps a humongous tarp, which, Many of you probably don't have at your fingertips, but you could certainly go out and get one. This is probably the next best thing to help protect against that washout. All right, and next up, we are gonna be mixing up some of our tenacity here, uh, put on our gloves and our safety glasses, our PPE, mix it all up in the Petra HD 4000 here, and we are going to spray it all over the entire lawn. And then I'm gonna follow up with the Simple Lawn Solutions right after that. All right, we are almost finished. Just a few more steps left. Next up, we have our starter fertilizer. 
I like to put this down now mostly because I don't want to touch or step on the lawn after we are finished with putting the peat moss down and we're starting to water the lawn. Uh, some folks like to wait a couple weeks after germination to put this down. Totally fine. I'm putting this down right now. This right here is a 4,000 square foot bag. Uh, we have just under 3,000 square feet, so we'll have a little bit extra here. I'm gonna be using this Echo RB100S spreader to spread it all out. All right, so all of the fertilizer is spread out, leaving us with just one last step, that is spreading the peat moss. This right here is the Lanzi compost and peat moss spreader. They actually have three sizes. They have a 24 inch. This one right here is a 36 inch, and then they have the larger 44 inch. This one's nice if you have a ride on. This can be towed behind your mower. Uh, also the 44 inch does the same thing, uh, but we're gonna be using this today. This will make quick work of it, load up these bags of peat moss and just roll it around the entire lawn. So this right here was just one bag of peat moss. Did a pretty good job. I got about two and a half or so passes here and then I got two passes up there. Um, and I wanna show you what's left in here. This is crazy. This is all the stuff that you don't want on your lawn. Does a good job of sifting all this crap out <clears throat> so that it doesn't end up on the lawn. So this right here is pretty much garbage or you could put it in your gardens, you know, whatever you wanna do, but we're not gonna put it on the lawn. All right, there it is. We are completely covered in peat moss. All that's left now, actually, I do have to run out and grab some more peat moss because I only had five bags and I still have to do all of this. I'm not gonna film that. I'll do that a little bit later, but just to show you what things look like over here, really all that's left is just kind of cleaning up around the edges here along the sidewalk. All the fertilizer that had kind of made its way onto the concrete blow back into the yard. Uh, there's a few areas, I don't know if you can see them, but there are a few areas that were a little bit lighter on the peat moss. So like I said, I ran out of peat moss, so I gotta go back and probably do another pass with peat moss in those areas. But other than that, we got some good coverage over there. We've got pretty good coverage over here. I'm happy with that. I'm probably going to have to pick up another like three or four bags of peat moss. But let me show you something that I wasn't anticipating. And that's all of this. I knew I would get some of this stuff out of these bags, but this is from five bags, actually four bags. I got the rest of the fifth bag in there still. I need to dump but this is almost an entire bag of peat moss by itself. I mean, and, and we can't really use any of this for this job. So, you know, depending on the quality of the peat moss you get uh, and the type, um, you may have some waste here. So you may have to buy an extra couple bags like I actually have to do to finish this job. So we're gonna clean this area up here. We'll put the caution tape up and I'll show you what it looks like just in a few seconds. All right, there it is. This is the final product here, all taped up, protected from all the neighborhood kids and maybe even the dogs. But the next step, and this is a very important step, this will not work if you do not do this, you have to water. So over the next couple of days here, all the way through past germination, you need to water. Now you don't need to water to where things are soaked and you have runoff. You just wanna water till things are moist. That's what the peat moss is going to help you with. That stark contrast between dry and wet peat moss. You only wanna water it until it appears wet and then just keep it wet throughout the day. You don't have to keep watering all day long to the point where water starts running off. That is too much water. So just keep up with the watering. I know a lot of you are going through a renovation right now. I hope that mother nature is being kind to you. When we go through this kind of work, that is the most annoying thing when mother nature unleashes and you have this insane storm and everything washes away. All your hard work literally goes down the drain. I hope that does not happen to you. I wish everyone good luck on their renovations. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope these tips have helped you. If they did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.